we ask people who go camping, what's the scariest, creepiest, most disturbing thing that's ever happened to you in the woods? When I was younger, around 14 or 15 years old, my family used to camp at a state park. Every night, my friend and I would walk through the woods. We called this the ritual. This particular night, we decided to walk further into the woods than usual. We had flashlights, but we liked to try and navigate through the woods with them turned off. We were about a half a mile from the nearest campsite when we heard soft whispering behind us. Obviously, we hit the flashlights and spun around, did not see a thing. So, we kept walking and we hear it again. This time, we stop and look around a bit before we decided to head back to our campsite. Then we see what's whispering. It's a lady crawling on the ground whispering random words. She was wearing dark clothes and was covered in dirt. When she sees that we notice her, she stands up and declares she's looking for her campsite. We end up walking her back to the campground and try helping her find her group. Turns out, she was super drunk or high and got lost trying to find a bathroom. Her friends didn't even notice she was missing and if we did not go that far into the woods, she would have been lost all night. It was pretty creepy. I live in a rural town surrounded by mountains and forest, so camping is almost a weekly event even in the winter. The one I can't shake is when me and my friend broke off from the group of other 16 to 19 year olds to camp by a better fishing spot about a mile away. We only brought one tent for the group, so we built a lean-to against a large boulder in a clearing. I could not sleep because I had a feeling something was watching us. I assumed it was a mountain lion, which isn't that big of a deal, considering their behavior. So I threw some logs on the fire. I looked up from the fire and under the light of the full moon, there was a man standing at the edge of the clearing about 80 yards away. I was frozen and I could not take my eyes off him while he assumingly stared back. He walked off into the opposite direction after a minute or two. I doubt he had any ill intentions, but I sat there holding my friend's 357 the whole night. I didn't wave or call out because I was terrified. I was frozen since I was 16 and inexperienced. Nowadays, I would call out and see what's going on. Camping at Yellowstone a few years ago, he set up our camper at an actual site and decided to do some two-day long backpack trips and some other long trails. The second one we went to was Cascade Valley Canyon. Absolutely beautiful. So, get about 10 miles into the 22-mile loop and decide to set up our tent here since it was getting dark. We cook some food and chill for a bit before heading to bed. Around 2 a.m., we're all awakened by something just outside the tent. My mind immediately jumps to bears or wolves or something. Then, it starts talking. I will never forget... I think there's, I think there's three or four of them in the tent. Let's just get out of here. None of us could sleep the rest of the night. At the crack of dawn, we hightail it out of there, made excellent time, hiked the 12 miles in about three hours and got to the ranger station, reported what happened. They said they received a call similar to our story in the middle of the night. They sent rangers into the trail at dawn, never found out what's going on down there did not hear anyone get hurt, but then again, I didn't really look into it. A few friends and I had a long weekend, five days off from school. We decided to go camping in North Georgia mountains. We packed a 10-person tent, there were five of us, two guys and three girls, and loaded up my buddy's truck. He and I had some experience being outdoors, camping, hiking, and hunting, and he's an army vet. So we packed really well and had all sorts of amenities like a propane stove, grill, fold-up cots, and portable shower. We were in it for the whole weekend. We left Wednesday afternoon and parked the truck in a small town and started hiking into the woods to find a spot. It was a fairly normal hike until we got about four to five miles in. The first time we noticed something strange was when we came to the little clearing in the woods with a big pond tiny lake next to it. We stepped into the open area and everything stopped. No birds chirping, no squirrels, even the clouds and wind seemed to stop moving. 
My buddy and I both thought, well shit, there's gotta be a predator nearby, and took out our handguns. It's the law in Kennesaw, just in case. I've never seen a bear in Georgia, so we figure it was a mountain lion or maybe some coyotes. My friend and I were looking around at the edge of the clearing and he grabbed me. He nodded across the water and when I looked, I saw what seemed to be a woman just standing at the tree line. She was maybe 150 yards away. We assumed she must have lived somewhere nearby, so we continued walking past the water and the clearing. As we headed back into the woods, I looked over my shoulder at where she was standing, but she was gone. The sounds of the forest returned once we got into the trees. We made a campsite about two miles past that as it was getting late, and we did not want to be stuck building a camp in the dark. We got everything unpacked and set up and built a fire, popped a couple of beers, sat down to hang out. There was a girl who I had interest in, she was on the trip. We've been flirting, so... After a few beers and the sun was down, we snuck away from the fire under the pretense that she wanted help setting up a part of the tent. We started fooling around, and after a few minutes she stopped and looked at me funny. I asked what was wrong and she said, Nothing. It just got really quiet. We both quickly dress and head back outside to the fire. The others have not noticed anything strange and did not mention anything wrong, except joking with us that, quote, it took us a long time to fix that tent. On the first morning, we found the propane stove had been turned on but not ignited and had gone empty overnight. None of us even used it. The second morning, we noticed some things have gone missing. A lantern we left outside by the fire was gone. My crush's sweatshirt she left on a little folding chair or stool gone. We figured we just misplaced things or... Someone had used them and put them somewhere else. During the second day, though, Friday, we were looking for a waterfall that we read online was in the area. We were following the river upstream when everything went silent again. My buddy nudged me while we were walking and indicated up to the top of the hill next to the river. I looked up through the trees and was just able to make out the figure of the same woman. Same clothes and all. Just standing. I couldn't tell if she was looking at us or not, but she was standing there. My buddy told the girls he thought he saw a mountain lion following in us and was going to scare it off. He hustled up the hill making a lot of noise, came back about 10 minutes later. He said he scared it off to the girls, but told me aside that the woman was in there when he got up there. We found the waterfall and put it to our minds as the girls decided to skinny dip in the river and boobies can solve anything. We hiked back to camp and found it a mess. It wasn't totally trash, but it was clear something's gotten into our stuff. We told the girls it was probably raccoons. We both took out our guns to go to bed with us. <sighs> that night, shit went sideways. I remember waking up because my crush was squeezing my arm. We've been sleeping and cuddled up together. I opened my eyes and she hushed me before I could ask what was wrong. There was a complete silence all around the tent. I looked across the tent and my buddy was sitting halfway up looking around. We both stayed awake for the next two hours until the sun started coming up. Then, we packed up our stuff and we headed out. The entire hike back into town was eerily silent. There were a couple of points I thought I saw the woman through the trees, but never got a clear sight of her. We avoided the lake completely got back to the truck in what seemed like half the time it took to get to the camp. After we were safely on the road back home, the girls and my buddy all started to tell everyone about the moments they thought they heard or saw the woman all weekend, but we were too freaked out to mention it aloud, like she would go away if we ignored her. The wild part was none of us could describe her face. It was almost like it was blurry. In the late 80s, I was in my early 20s, and two friends and I went camping in Central Florida. Two of us were working for the park service at the time. We were able to camp for free in other parks in the state. Both of us had done a lot of camping before. Me, I grew up camping with my family on every single vacation, all over the state. For the other friend with us, this was her first camping trip ever. We were camping in the youth area which was empty the weekend and was quieter and more isolated than the regular campsites. 
Later in the afternoon on the second day of our trip, we were all sort of spread out in the area of the campsite. Being within shouting distance but enjoying a little solitude, I was collecting firewood. Every now and then, I'd kind of feel like someone was watching me. I'd look around, see and hear nothing, and then shrug it off and go back to what I was doing. Later on around sunset, we had the bonfire started. One of the rangers who lived on the site, about a quarter mile away, came over with a truckload of firewood and a six-pack of beer. We all sat around talking for a while. Well, after dark, we could suddenly hear what was probably a bunch of teenagers fooling around on the trails a couple miles away. Since the trails were closed at sunset, the ranger and my co-worker drove off to shoo them back to their campsites. My other friend and I were just relaxing around the fire, talking a little and mostly enjoying the night in peace and quiet. All of the sudden, I had a cold chill go over me. Hair stood straight up on the back of my neck, and out of nowhere, I was terrified. I tried to ignore it, but it kept building. I did not see anything to my friend. I did not want to scare her. Then I glanced over at her just as she glanced at me and she said, Do you feel that? I said, Yeah, I think we maybe should go to the car. We both felt like we were in really deadly danger, but no idea from what. We started walking at a casual pace, not wanting to appear scared. Then halfway to the car, we looked at each other again and simultaneously broke into a dead run. We reached the car, jumped in and locked the door and turned on the headlights. I sat there with my pistol fully loaded, feeling like it was totally inadequate for whatever was out there. We both just sat looking straight ahead. We were afraid to look around. I had the feeling at one point if I turned my head and looked out the window, I'd see something that would drive me insane. I don't know how long we sat there. It was probably just a few minutes, but it felt like forever. Then, it just left. We could actually feel it going away. A few minutes after that, the other two came back in the truck. We kind of laughed it off afterward, but I'll tell you, I've never been that scared before or since. I faced a lot in my life and nothing has completely terrified me like that. I don't know what it was, but I'm still convinced we were in terrible danger. Growing up in the woods and going camping, my family and I have our share of bizarre and scary stories. This one, I just can't seem to wrap my head around even to this day. My parents own 35 acres of property in the deep Rockies, about two to three hours away from our home. We spent as much time as we could camping there as we all loved it. It was secluded and beautiful and we had a lot of freedom there as kids. My parents were both experienced campers and backpackers and had both grown up in the mountains. One day, we head up at night and arrived at the property around 9 or 10 p.m. We were all tired and started to unpack the tents and such from the car. The minute we got out though, we all got a strange feeling. It did not feel normal or good. We had encountered wild predators at this point and knew the feeling was being watched. But this was like being watched from all sides. We also all noticed that there's no sounds. It's dead silent. Normally, we would be hearing all sorts of insects and occasional owls, night hawks or bats, and just the general hum of a forest. Nothing. We all kind of laughed nervously and maybe mentioned a few things, but got to work setting up our tents. This is when the real strange stuff starts to happen. We began to hear rustling in the branches around us, about 10 feet off the ground, it seems. It's almost sounding like a large creature like monkeys or raccoons jumping from the tree to tree loudly. And many of them. I have never, ever seen raccoons have the ability to do something like that. And those sounds were clumsy, unlike birds. It gets louder and louder and became extremely unnerving. At this point, the tent is set up and my parents put my brother and I there, telling us to stay inside. They go out with flashlights trying to make sense of this bizarre activity. As they're outside, we start to hear these bizarre calls. I've never heard anything like this before or since. Honestly, it almost sounds like humans mimicking sounds of primate haulers or screeching. There was an odd hum-like aspect to it, and it's like they're calling and responding to each other from every direction, 
along with branches cracking and rustling. My parents come back to the tent and tell us they couldn't see anything at all. I remember how shocked and frightened my mom looked. It scared me because she was a bad butt and would stalk bears to get a good photo. Both my parents were not easily frightened in nature or not at all. We all huddled together in the tent confused, scared, and unsure of what to do. The sounds are so loud and everywhere it almost sounds like some crazy storm outside. Our dogs are cowered in between us, totally freaked out. My dad decides to go out again, and I remember, as he finishes unzipping the tent, the sound stops. Just like that, in an instant, and the oppressive, weird feeling is gone. He and my mom go out again to investigate and find nothing, except fallen branches and some strange marks up high, high on the trees. They come back, talk us down, and somehow manage us to sleep. We still talk about this to this day. None of us know what happened and have no explanation. Like I said, we had some crazy and strange things happen to us, but never anything remotely similar to what happened that night. I was living in Brazil, and a friend and I decided to do a one night out and back through mountainous rainforest terrain in one of the southern states. We mostly wanted to get some exercise and do a gear shakeout before going on a longer trip into Patagonia. The experience started out really tough. We were doing almost constant climbing and it was hot. Humidity was near 100% through lush vegetation. Eventually, we were pretty much in clouds and completely drenched from sweat and humidity. It was kind of hellish, soaked to the bone with no chance of drying out. Fortunately, at that altitude, it gets below freezing frequently at night, so there wasn't many insects or animals, only birds. We hiked for probably eight hours with little progress. It was slow going through that terrain. At early evening, we came to a flat spot, the first we've seen in hours, and decided to make camp as it was starting to rain. I basically made camp in several inches of standing water. I was beat, so... I just sat in my tent reading. Around 3 a.m. I woke to a girl singing in the distance. The singing kept coming closer until she was singing right at our tent. She pushed past us and the singing drifted off. She was singing maybe a lullaby or children's song about rain in Portuguese, but it sounded very strange. An hour later I got woken up to the singing in the distance again. She was coming back towards us singing the same rain song. As she passed us, I could hear a little exasperation in her voice. She continued singing and went back in the direction of the trailhead. Another hour later, I was again woken by her singing as she was again coming back towards us. Except now she was also crying. She continued to cry and sing as she moved past us for the final time. We woke up that morning, looked at each other and said, what the duck was that? And then we got on our way. It was very eerie at the time and I don't have an explanation for it. We were in an extremely isolated location and the trail was definitely only used by recreational hikers. I really can't say why this woman was out wandering, singing and crying at 3 a.m. in pouring rain. I love to choose my outfits, but they tend to be skin tight or you see some skin. Anyways, I was walking home from school one day and I was wearing a skirt with shorts underneath and stockings. The shirt doesn't necessarily matter for this part. While walking home, I was listening to music on high, trying to block out the world from a long day at school. I felt something brush up against me and did not really think anything of it. I was a bit entranced in my music and could have even been humming. I noticed something brush up against me again, so I glanced behind me to see a man about two inches close to me. I screamed in surprise and apologized him for screaming. He seemed pretty flustered himself. He walked in front of me and sped away. I couldn't tell, but I think he was trying to look up my skirt, and that would explain the weird feeling of wind while he was behind me. If that wasn't strange enough, it took me a while to finally get home. I stopped off and took some breaks to try and calm down. When I finally got home, I noticed someone I have not seen around my apartment. I thought I might have seen a new neighbor because there was a guy under my stairway. 
He just looked like some kid who went to my high school. He was wearing a hoodie and basketball shorts. When I came up to my apartment, he moved directly underneath my staircase which has holes in it so he can look up and see the person through the stairs. I can notice this guy was definitely trying to look up my skirt. I had a pretty smug look on my face because I had worn shorts. When I've gotten to the top of my stairs, I noticed he pulled out his phone and was trying to take pictures. I was feeling extremely scared at this point. I've forgotten all about the guy from before and could not seem to unlock the door. My front door has an electric phone lock and my phone was not able to connect to the loco for some reason. I realized I could not get in my own house and there was some creepy perv trying to take pictures of me right underneath the stairs. I looked underneath the stairs to see if he was still there. He most surely was. Not only was he there, he was enjoying himself right underneath my stairs, just standing there enjoying himself. I almost had a heart attack and I had no idea what to do. I could not run down the stairs and leave because he was right there. I could not go into my house because it was locked and I could not connect. I decided to call my dad and ask him what to do. My dad called the police for me, which was probably what I should have done in the first place, but I have no time to think. I had sat out of eyesight and yelled at the perv to leave, but I didn't know if he was aggressive or if he would respond. I decided to just make a run for the community office at our apartment complex. I made a plan to find a phone and find people so he could not harass me if he got the chance. I made the choice, started running down the stairs into the office. I looked back and he wasn't there. Relieved, but still full of adrenaline, I ran to the house. My dad finally unlocked it. Later, the police came by and asked me some questions. They said they'll keep an eye out, but they never found him. I haven't seen him since and hope it stays that way. My family has a cabin. It's really old and just a mobile home in the middle of the woods in northern Michigan. We've had it for years and years, but only recently, some unexplained odd things had happened and the police had ever been out there to search the place. The last time I went to the cabin was the worst experience. I went up with my friend. For context purposes, we're two girls in our late 20s and arrived at dark. We got out and unloaded but had trouble turning on the power. It was an outside electrical box. Because the lock was frozen shut, we were trying to get it unstuck but kept hearing noises around the cabin. Finally, it sounded like noises were very close to us. As we weren't getting anywhere with the lock, we rushed inside in case it was a bear milling around. We sat inside for maybe five minutes before deciding to drive to the nearest town to get a motel for the night. We would come back once it was light to get the power on. We grabbed a few things and headed back to our car. I got in and turned the car on, but nothing happened. The car was 100% unresponsive. The doors wouldn't even lock. My car had absolutely no issues. We had just drove in three hours to the cabin without any problems. Something had to have happened to the car in the few minutes we were inside. I told my friend we needed to get back inside. We got to the door and locked up behind us. We looked at each other, suddenly scared, and our car was totally dead. We had absolutely zero cell service and we had no power. We tried to stay calm. We made a new game plan. We were just going to rough it for the night and then, at first light, walk in the direction of civilization until we get cell service. Only a short time later, we were sitting together in the living room, quietly talking. Suddenly, there was two sharp, loud knocks on the back of the door of the cabin. We both absolutely froze. We sat there horrified and shaking, just waiting for someone to push their way into the door or window. This was a mobile home, so... I would take very minimal effort to break in. We were met with only silence, but now we knew. Someone was outside. What did they want? It was much scarier to think they had not broken in. They just potentially sabotaged our car and were now knocking on our door to toy with us. We sat silent and terrified. After a while, we started talking again, only to have something bang on a window. Just one loud smack. I've never been so scared. We quickly realized we just had to stay alert and awake until morning. 
We just had to hope that whatever was outside did not try to get in. It did not try to get in that night, but patterns of the knocks on the windows continued for hours. As soon as the sun was up, we ventured outside. We took a look under the hood of my car next. It turns out, the bolt that clamps the metal piece to the battery terminals was loosened almost completely. The nut was all the way loosened. One or two turns more and it would have fallen off completely. I've had some spooky experiences. Went camping with my brother in the Australian Outback. Literally the middle of nowhere. It was a 40 degree day in WA and we were unbearably fatigued by night. The humidity stuck around in the evening. Slept in a two-man tent with my brother and was awakened by him shuffling about. Checked my watch. 2.45 a.m. Needed to take a leak. Stepped outside and walked 30 feet to the back of a colossal oak. It wasn't even that dark. The light of the moon was powerful, but there were pockets of deep shadows. I glanced left. I glanced right. Listen closely because I was unsure of any hallucinations I was going through because of the heat. I looked left again. There was a distinct human figure that looked unrealistically tall. I squinted at it and my heart was pounding. He hello I said. The noise it made sounded like a very quiet, deep laugh. <laughs> I swear, I was going mad. I kept my eyes locked onto it as I bolted to our tent. Its head followed my gaze. I unzipped the tent and woke up my brother. By the time I looked back, the thing was gone. I do not know what bore water I drank that day, but I definitely saw something bizarre that night. That's going to end the stories for tonight. I hope you'll be able to sleep after some of these stories. Midnight Monster will be around tomorrow, so subscribe and tune in for another scare.